And I have okay. a small sto uh, shop in the Netherlands. Right. And people come to my shop and they like to hear stories. That's very, very good. So yeah. you're actually your own marketeer. Yes, yeah. 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 because I can't afford a real one. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're a more real one than a real one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What would you like people uh, to know about uh, Nick Wax when they buy the, the bottle? Yeah, I mean, the first thing that they need to know is that they have a problem that they can solve because obviously they're buying Nick Wax because they're not staying as comfortable as they otherwise would do. So they need to understand that there is a problem, that um, waterproof garments and waterproof uh, footwear doesn't last forever unless you look after it. Um, but if you do look, do look after it, it will last a lot longer. So that's really the first thing that they need to know. Um, then I guess the second thing they need to know is that our products are going to help them out. They're going to improve on the performance of their, their clothing um, and that they can, they can actually apply them quite easily. So that's really important. So they need the, they need the product. They can get the performance they want by applying the product quite easily. And then I guess the next detail they need to know is how am I going to do it? Okay. And after all of those three things, then they probably want to know, well, who are these people and what is this stuff? Yeah. And where did it come from? Yeah. Uh, and that's where there's a lot more of a story. Yeah. Um, I guess they also want to know whether what they're buying is a relatively good product compared to other products in terms of whether it's effective. Uh, so maybe our product works. And that's English, by the way. That means the product does work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So after that, they might want to know a little bit about the identity and the personality of the brand, I suppose. Because what I think is very special, uh, there is this phrase, people buy from people, they right. know, like and trust. Yes. And I think it's really cool that actually Nick from Nick Wax is, is really a person who exists. Yeah. And there are not so many brands that the you can still uh, uh, speak to the person who really invented it. Yeah, there's a personality. Yeah. And uh, I guess I guess that's that's an interesting story because I was so enthusiastic about outdoor activities and walking and going in the mountains and getting lost and camping and things like that. That was the first first passion. Like a lot of the people who started brands in the outdoor business originally. Well, so about passionate, passionate. Yeah, passionate yeah. about about the outdoors, and yeah. that that was that was what first actually got me into it, and then. What ultimately got me into business was finishing university and being unemployed and having no money. Yeah. Um, and knowing that I could do things, I had already, um, as even as a, as a young a child, I'd been experimenting with ways to make my leather boots work oh, really? better. Yeah. So, so it, by accident, something that I did invented when I was probably 15 or 16 years old suddenly became a product that I could sell yeah, when I was unemployed. Yeah. And then from there, there's a lot of learning. It was a very interesting journey. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's about, about, about passion for the outdoors, but you really have passion for the environment. Yeah, I think those two things go together. Yeah. They should do. They don't always, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I very much wanted to do... I found myself in, in the business of doing business and then I decided that what I wanted to do is to do that with the least amount of damage. Bringing products which were based on water with no propellant gas into the marketplace, which took quite a few years to develop, that was the producing water-based products to, to make things waterproof from water, that was a real innovation. And that took us from being a tiny little business in a little village in, in, in southern England to still being in a little village in southern England, but selling over, across the world. Yeah, it's fantastic. Because yeah. Uh, th that was <coughs> that was really about trying to solve uh, an environmental problem yeah. with products that already existed. Yeah. And now uh, for, for next year, you uh, all the bottles that uh, that are going to be recycled plastic. Yeah, we're moving over to recycled plastic. We, we've been using uh, recyclable plastic. In other words, uh, all of our bottles could always be recycled. Um, but now we've done the experiments and uh, there's a good quality enough of, of recycled plastic that we can use recycled plastic, which is really yeah. good. The only difference is that it's a slightly different colour. So oh, really? um, basically our 
current bottles are a nice clear white yes. and this is grey. It still looks nice. But as far as putting a label on it and uh, that's really not a problem. Yes. Um, and it's recycled, 100% recycled, which is, yeah. is great. And then you're going to encourage people also to recycle it again. Absolutely. And, and that's and, important. And I think that, that what is interesting also is that by choosing to use recycled plastic, you're also creating a market for recycled plastic. Yeah. So this is actually encouragement yeah. for more recycling. And will the bottles get more expensive next year? No. Oh. No. It's really good. No, yes. no extra cost. No. <laughs> it's no. no. Yeah, and you have a, a, another uh, uh, project. It's called uh, plugging for plastic. Absolutely. Are well, you, yes. Are you plugging? <laughs> um, I'm not really a runner anymore. I'm a walker, but I can assure you that if I see any plastic where I am going, I pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And where does it come from? This, this. I mean that I, I, I know plugging. But I think the plugging for the plastic. The pl plugging is idea is 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 to just be picking up plastic as as you run, as you walk, as you use the outdoors. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a very lovely idea. I think it's correct and yeah. it's necessary, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. But it, it the best thing about it, I think, is it raises awareness. Yeah. Which I think is really important. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we want to clean the place up. But we also want to get to the, to the position where we no longer need to clean the place up. And it's a problem which is completely artificial. It's unnecessary. It's, it's one of the problems that we can easily solve, actually. And what about, um, because I, I have an outdoor shop and I would love people yeah. just to refill their bottle in, in my shop. Yeah, I mean, refilling is a good idea. Um, but you have <coughs> a lot of complications around it. Um, and one of the big complications is that you have to make sure when you sell any chemical product that it has the right labeling mm. because otherwise there are safety issues yeah. um, so if you can address that problem we could do it but, but unfortunately <laughs> our products although we sell quite a lot we're not like selling milk yes. um, we're not selling something which is Every day, some of look, them looks like milk. Yeah, <laughs> but the, the, the volume is not really high enough yeah. to make that worthwhile because there's a wide range of different Nikwax products. Some of them yeah. are selling fast, and some of them are selling slowly. Yeah. Maybe on some of the fastest lines, you could do that. Yeah, I mean, I th I would love to do that, um, yeah. but it is it is quite a complicated one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think with the recycled bottles, you really made a good start. The recycled bottles are a good start. We have to try and do things which have a big impact, and moving from normal plastic to recycled plastic has quite a big impact. Yes. Now we want to try and find what the next big Im impact is. Um, I'm not sure. But no? No, but maybe it's refilling, but maybe maybe it's something else. I don't know. Okay, yeah. so you're still well, of course, thinking yeah. about I'm it. I'm sure we have people yes. thinking about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think there's one, of, one other aspect of, of, of our story which I think is interesting, which I would like to encourage, um, because finally, after more than maybe 30 years of talking about climate change, finally the awareness has arisen to a level where people are talking about climate emergency. Um, and I would love to encourage all of the people in your shop. They, they need to be saving energy wherever they can, but also to be thinking about where they can get involved with um, charities which are getting involved with reforestation of areas. Because uh, as much of the problem with climate change is coming from deforestation and the protection of forests and reforestation is, is, is a big and important part. And I bring it up because in terms of our production, we have reduced down the amount of energy we use to the minimum and we have balanced in, in our operations and we have balanced out the remaining carbon that we emit um, by reforesting areas in Ecuador in South America. Yeah, and it, it's, it's something that any business could do. Yeah. Um, and I would just like to encourage people to think about doing that for themselves, think about reducing their energy and encourage businesses to do the same thing. Yeah, everybody can do a, a everybody small can thing do something. To make the big yeah, 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 absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, you're very welcome. It's an honor to to uh, not at all. Uh, ask you these questions. Well, it's an it's honor nice. to be be asked the questions. Yeah. Thank you. So when uh, when a customer comes in my shop, I can uh, uh, tell them a little bit more about the, the Nick Wax story okay. and, and yeah, absolutely. I will encourage them to go vlogging yeah. and. Uh,